Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to my shop. So how exactly do you start, steer, and control a saw to go straight down the line? Let's take a look. Starting the saw can be a bit tricky. Some people like to start on a backstroke, which is okay, but the problem is western teeth point that way, so you're not going to be very efficient. But it's not going to bounce around quite as much. Some saws have smaller, less aggressive teeth right on the tip, so you can start out here. The problem with that is you're way back here with your control and you have a lot of flimsiness out here, so it's kind of hard to hit a line when all your control is way back over here. Personally, I like to start closer to the hand, usually about one third of the way from the back to the tip. And I'm gonna start on the front stroke. Even with big teeth like this for PPI, I can start on the first stroke, pushing forward. The trick to that is your other hand. Yes, your dominant hand is driving the saw, but your other hand is the one that's actually guiding it. So with my other hand, I'm going to actually pinch the board. And what that does is as I pinch, my thumbnail is going to push farther away. And as I relax the pinch, it lets the saw come back. And so I'm actually pushing the saw side to side with my thumb. The saw is constantly being pushed up against the thumb, giving me a positive contact. So I'm just sliding against that guide. This gives me fine precision to push the saw one way or the other and set it exactly on the line so I can start the cut. Next, the problem is how do we stop the saw from jamming in and just causing problems right on that first stroke? How do we get the saw to just cut straight on the first stroke in? The trick to it is this horn down here. This is probably the most valuable thing on this entire saw. This horn allows you to control this entire saw. When I hold this big saw, my middle finger is going to rest up in here. My pointer finger is going straight along, and all of the weight should be rested between my middle finger and the bottom of this horn back here. This horn is what's actually lifting the whole weight of the saw up. As I push down on the horn, the saw goes up. As I let the horn come up, the saw goes down. All of the control is back at the back of my palm on this bottom horn and my middle finger. Now when I'm gripping it, I have these three fingers coming through, one pointing forward, and this grip isn't very tight. It's just holding the saw loosely in place. What that allows me to do is actually move the saw above the board and just kind of scratch as I go. I'm not actually cutting into the wood. I'm holding the whole weight of the saw off with this back horn. That allows me to have full control of the saw and put it exactly where I want. And then when I want to actually cut, I just put a little bit of weight into the saw and now it's cutting. Doesn't matter how big the teeth are, it still works the same way. So when cutting, my offhand controls exactly where the saw starts. My dominant hand, there's a balance in between the finger and the back of the palm that lifts the saw up and down to give me more control. And then I can put the exact amount of weight I want on and start on the push stroke. Every time I want to, that gives me all the control I need to start it exactly where I want and on the push stroke and just going straight into it. That way I have the same movement going back and forth and I'm not worrying about it bouncing around as I try and pull it back and hit that line. Now the tricky part. We have a line we want to follow all the way down. And so I have to ask myself, do I want to split the line and put the saw right down the middle? Do I want it on one side or the other? Normally with a marking gauge line of a very, very fine line, but in this case I'm using a pencil so you can see it. And I'm actually going to put the saw on this side of the cut so that the line ends up being the very edge of the kerf. So I'll position it with my thumb, let it slide, and then when ready, I'll let it engage and start the cut. Now, before we go any farther, we need to talk about saw geometry. On a western saw, the tooth is pointing forward. This means where you move the most amount of material when the saw goes forward. With Japanese saws, the teeth point back. That means you have the most stock removal when the saw goes backward. And you'll hear lots of arguments over one is far more efficient than the other, and you'll hear really good arguments for both directions. The truth of the matter is they are both identical. You're both removing wood, and how much wood just depends on the file of the tooth cut. And in that case, they're both identical as long as the teeth are of similar size. The big difference comes in the control. With a Japanese saw, the leading tooth is on the back side. That is the first tooth to engage the wood. And because of that, you have no control over the leading tooth. Your hand is back here. So you can do a lot of twisting before this saw does anything. Yeah, you do have some control, but you have to really do a lot of finagling. If this goes offline, it's really, really hard to bring it back on. But the nice thing about it is, for a beginner, if you set it up true, it's going to track true and go straight down your line. The problem with a western saw is the leading tooth is now on your side of the board. Any slight twitch or movement in your hand, wrist, elbow, shoulder, all of it has to be in perfectly alignment. Otherwise, the saw starts going wee over this way and wee over this way and becomes very difficult to control. The other side of the coin there is that that means that you have all the control. A slight movement of the hand can make the saw come back online. It doesn't take much at all to make the western saw do what you want to do. 
So this is great for beginners, it's just a lot more difficult to control in the end. However, the western saw is much harder for beginners, but once you put the time into it and you get the control over it, you have a lot more things you can do with this. So that leads us back here to the line. I'm going to take this saw and I'm going to forcefully make it go off course. I'm going to bring it back here and I'm going to cut this over here. You can see how I'm cutting a good 16th inch off line. And if I keep going, I'm going to be farther and farther off line. The problem is, at this point, most people want to twist the saw and try and bring it back into line. And that's okay, other than the fact of now you're creating a curvature in your cut. That's going to start binding the saw, it's going to start impacting sawdust in there, it's going to go all over the place, and soon you're going to find yourself on the other side of the line. And you do this zigzag thing going back and forth, and every time it's getting harder and harder to push because the curve is getting tighter and tighter. Rather than trying to correct it down here, let's bring it back up to where we had the problem. And then we can use this bottom horn on the saw again to hold the weight of the saw. Holding the weight with that bottom horn, we're going to come up here to where the problem was, and we're going to twist the saw here and use the side of the teeth to scratch that line back into place. Slowly bringing it back down. And now we're down at that same point again, but now with the saw kerf is where it should be. And at this point, now we have a straight kerf, so our saw isn't binding and we can go to time. So if you find yourself going off course, stop, back up, twist the saw at the point where it starts to go off course, and use the side of the teeth to scratch yourself back into alignment. You can do the same thing with a Japanese saw, it's just a little bit harder because you have less control over the backside tooth. It can still be done, but just understand it's going to take a little bit longer. So now what happens when the saw kerf looks perfect on this side, but you flip the board around and you're way off the line? In that case, you have an alignment issue. The saw needs to be in line with your wrist, your forearm, all the way up to your shoulder. All of this should stay in a perfect stroke so that you're running straight down the line. If any motion of this, if your elbow gets out here, now the saw wants to come over this way and you're going to be doing one of these numbers. Or if you're leaning over too far and your elbow is back this way, your saw is going to want to do one of these numbers. And your elbow and shoulder are going to be going all over the place. You've got to keep your saw in line with your arm all the way up to your shoulder and have a nice smooth motion in and out. The problem is you can't always tell and it's really really hard to know if your elbow is moving or your shoulder is moving. And so the best thing to do is set up a camera just like this. Put the camera right in line with the saw and then shoot a couple clips of you running the saw. And then you'll see, oh, my shoulder's out of alignment, my elbow's out of alignment, I need to bring it back in. And then consciously think about bringing that portion of your body back into alignment. And you're going to find that you're drifting back out in that same way. And everyone has the same tendency to do one thing or the other. And if you can consciously think, ah, I've got to bring my elbow in a little farther, You'll bring it in a little farther than you think, and then you realize that you're actually running exactly the way you want to be running. However, this may be one of those rare times where the problem may not be yourself. If you see that you are perfectly in alignment and the saw is going off course, and for some reason the saw is always going off course the same direction, then the problem's probably the saw. See, every tooth on this actually leans out to the side a little bit. That's called set. And what that does is it cuts a bigger groove than the thickness of the plate, giving that ability to twist and correct your cut. However, if one side has a bunch of teeth that are sticking out too far, that saw will start to curve in the direction of the teeth that are sticking out too far. To fix that, you can stone it. You just take a sharpening plate and you run it down the side that the saw is cutting to. So if I'm turning in this direction, that means I want to stone this side of the plate. Two or three strokes and you'll notice that, hey, it actually cuts straight now. If you want to see more on that, I have a whole video on how to stone a saw where I go into a lot more detail on that. With a Japanese saw, you can do the same thing and cut with one hand, and in which case the saw needs to be in line with your arm and your wrist and all the way up your shoulder. You want to make sure you're holding it with your wrist above the saw rather than to the side of the saw. If you're holding it beside the saw, it's going to cause you going all over the place. But the cool thing about Japanese saws is they're intended to be used with both hands, like a golf grip. You put your belly right in line with it, and now you pull towards yourself. The cool thing about using two hands is they kind of self-correct each other. If one of them is pulling too hard, the other one pulls back. They work together to give you a really nice straight cut down the board. Side note, why does a Ryoba saw have two sets of teeth? Well, one side is actually rip cut and the other side is actually cross cut. And if you want to know the difference, I've got a couple videos on that as well. Oh look, I'm missing a tooth on this one. Now I've been showing all of this with my biggest, heaviest hand saw. And the reason for that is this is one of the hardest ones to control. However, it's probably one that I use more than any other in the shop. And if you can master a big tooth heavy saw, the others are very similar. 
Whether it's a dovetail saw or a tenon saw or any of the other panel saws, they all work the exact same way. It's the same motion of keeping the saw in line with your arm. If you see it going off course, back up, fix your saw cut where it started to go off course, and then bring it into true. At every point along the line, you should be perfectly on it. It shouldn't be zigzagging across, and that's the same no matter what saw you're using. Whether it's a big whaleback saw or a small dazuki, you're going to have the same thing with controlling them because they still work on the pull stroke. In which case, it's great to have both hands on it so you have a full amount of control. You're going to have a little less stroke in your saw, but you're going to have that self-correcting adjusting to go straight down the line. So I know I kind of rushed through this whole thing, and I have several videos on each of those items individually, whether it be differences between Japanese and Western saw, how to start a saw, how to track a saw. I have detailed videos where I go into a lot of specifics on all of those topics. But I wanted to do one where I just kind of put it all in one place, so when I get those questions, I can send this video out. So I hope this answered your question, but if it didn't, throw it down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them, and I answer as many of them as I possibly can. Or if you have something specific, send me an email. I'd be glad to take a look at that. But if you do put comments down below, or you hit the like, share, subscribe, you are helping out the channel. Thank you! That means more than I can say, as well as people who are on Patreon, all of the names scrolling over here, people who buy uh, plans and other things on the website, thank you. It means more than I can say. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewer, and without people on Patreon, people purchasing plans and merchandise, uh, we wouldn't be here. Thank you for that. It means more than anything. And if you'd like to see the channel continue, then, well, you know what to do. <laughs> I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. One thing I have found is that every saw, no matter what it is, they all work a little bit better when you stroke them.